Welcome to the Internet Freedom Desk. My name is Jim, and I'll be taking you on the tour today. For those highly versed in computers, you will recognize the Internet Freedom Disk as a Linux Live CD Ubuntu style. Now, if you understood what I just said, then this video isn't made for you. This video is for all the people who don't understand that this fantastic product exists, and it's there for them to use to browse the Internet safely, safer than ever before. Because using the Internet Freedom Disk, your hard drive is locked in a virtual vault so that nothing can read or write from your hard drive while you're browsing the Internet. Now, this has been around for years, and people in the know have been using it. But there is no incentive to tell anybody about it because it, because it is free. And that is why it gets very little press for the normal person. But we're here to change all that and bring it to you. So please sit back, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. So for today's demonstration, we're going to need a copy of the Internet Freedom Disk. And this is just a plain CD. Uh, while we're browsing the Internet, nothing could be written to this CD because this is already written to. So we have that. Next, we're going to need a little flash drive. And we're going to use that to save a little document file that has some network information on it that's a long time to type in. So we'll just be able to cut and paste off of a file on this flash drive. And we need the notebook computer itself. This one has 512 megs of RAM. It's an AMD 2800 plus CPU. And it has a built-in 802.11g wireless. That's pretty standard notebook uh, for these days. It's a couple of years old. It's not the hottest thing out there. So we're going to start off by putting the Internet Freedom Disk into our CD-ROM drive. So there we go. We take it and we just pop it into the CD-ROM. Now, next thing we do is we just restart our computer. And as we do that, as the computer restarts, it will see the Internet Freedom Disk in our CD-ROM drive, and it will actually get it all to start firing up and, and running. So Windows right here is shutting down, and the system is restarting. Now we have sped this up a little bit so we don't have to wait so long. And here we are. We're at the opening screen of the Internet Freedom Disk Ubuntu style. So now we just simply uh, press the Enter key because the first item is the one we want that says uh, Start or Install Ubuntu. So we hit the Enter key and it fires up, much like the same process as Windows fires up. And here you see the different discovery of your sound card and the rest as your computer comes on. And here we go. Now we're up and running. The basically up and going. Now there's one little icon in the upper left corner that says install. Now we're going to stay away from that one because that will actually install Ubuntu onto your hard drive and we don't want to do that. Okay, so we stay away from that. So now we need to set up our wireless connection. We need to tell it basically just two things, what the name of the uh, network we want to connect to and what the encryption key is to allow us to get in. So uh, we need to turn on our wireless adapter on our notebook. Most uh, notebooks nowadays, for power saving reasons, automatically come with your antenna turned off. So if that's the case with yours, turn it on now. So um, with that, we have our little flash drive um, that has our information on it. So that has, we're just going to cut and paste off of that. So let's take that, our little thumb drive, pop off the cap, and put it into one of our USB slots that are open. When we do that, Ubuntu will automatically find the drive and open it up so we could see the files. So I'm going to stick it in now. And we just got to wait a little bit for the system to discover the flash drive and to display uh, the, the files to us. And they should be up in just a second. And there we go. So what we have to get out of that is just the network name and the web key. So we're going to double click the file that I called it web. You can call it whatever you want, whatever you need for your network. We choose to display the, the file. And once we get it up, we're just going to leave it in the corner uh, so that we can cut and paste from it. Now, if you had multiple networks you needed to connect to, you could list them all in here. And this is just like your little list of passwords. So we leave it there. And now we're going to 
um, open up the network section. So we just go uh, system, administration, and then network. And we'll put those two little pieces of information in, and we'll be connected. So we're going to choose the wireless uh, connection. That's the first one. And we hit properties to get inside. And now we're going to enable it. And we go back to our little document and copy the name, in this case, poolside. It's funny, we don't have a pool here, but we call it poolside. And we use control C to copy, or you could have gone edit, copy, either way, whichever you're more comfortable with. And then we go back to the thing, and we go control V to paste. And that makes a very nice way to get that in without having to type in all the long things. Because take a look how long the network key is. That's a lot to type in. So again, we copy it, and we go back, and we use control V to paste it back in. Now we're just about finished. That's about all we had to do to tell it what it had to go. Now we have to enable it. So we put a little check in the checkbox to turn on the wireless adapter or to make it recognized by the system. And we're done. That's all we need to do. We're now connected to the Internet. Okay, so now it's time to go surfing. We're going to click the icon for um, Mozilla Firefox, or the, the web browser that's installed with the Internet Freedom Disk, and up it comes. What we're looking at here is strictly just a file from the CD, so we want to make sure that we are connected to the Internet. So let's Google for the Internet Freedom Disk, and we'll find out that we're really connected by pulling a page right from the Internet. So now we're typing it into the Google search spot on the, in the browser, and we're surfing. Here comes Google. And if you notice, where the Internet Freedom Disk is the first unpaid uh, advertising in the, in the listing. So, woohoo, we made it. <laughs> but we're attached to the Internet now, and that's what we wanted to do. That's the whole purpose of this disk is to be able to surf the Internet safely. All the other things that this can do is not important to us because this is the reason we need it. And here we are at the site where you can go and visit and get updates and find out more tips and tricks about using the disk. So with our Internet fully functioning, we could go check our emails at like Yahoo Mail or Gmail, and we can open up all those attachments people told us not to open because they cannot infect our hard drive. It's locked in the vault. But is this 100% absolutely safe? No, it's not. Uh, only because, not that I know of a reason why people can get you, but only that they are very intelligent and motivated to get you. So you still have to keep your wits about you. Now it's time to turn off the computer and get back into Windows. So we turn off our wireless and we just go system, quit, and restart the computer. And we'll be going back into Windows. It's a shame that nothing can be said to be 100% safe, but every day they come out with new ways to attack and you just have to keep your wits about, but this is the safest way I know of surfing the Internet. Now here you get told to remove your CD and then press the Enter key. That's what that little blue writing is at the bottom. So we take out the CD and we hit the Enter key and we'll be back in the Windows where we left off. Now this is, Windows will have no idea and the hard drive will have no idea of anything we have just done. It's like a perfect case of computer amnesia. So let's do a little recap of what we had to do to be able to browse so safely. We had to put the Internet Freedom Disk into the CD-ROM drive, and we had to restart the computer, something uh, people with Windows know quite well what to, how to do. We put the flash drive into the USB slot so that we would have the network name and lo very long encryption key to just cut and paste into the network setup. And then when browsing with the, on the Internet using Firefox, and then we just shut it down and restarted the computer, and we were back into Windows. It was that simple. It was a quick trip, and everything about it is forgotten. Nothing was left on the hard drive. So why did we do all this? Well, most of all, we did it to protect our hard drive from criminals, criminals that are out to steal our identity, criminals that are trying to steal our money, and criminals that are trying to use our computer to harm others. So 
We also did it so we have leave no traces of our surfing activity on the computer. And that all those things combined give us peace of mind. And that's the purpose. So if you want to come and visit us, we're at internetfreedomdisc.blogspot.com. And when you're there, please take a moment to visit our 